welcome to the information torpedo repairs and recycling you are no doubt here because you own the device that's behind me an akai s1000 or the akai s1100 studio sampler a 16-bit stereo sampler made between 1998 and 1993 used by classic vintage artists of the past two decades including mobe the chemical brothers fat boy slim gary newman the pet shop boys all sorts there's a good chance if you've enjoyed a song in the past two decades, the sample or some of the samples has probably come from one of these. Now, the good news is for all you budding home music producers, it's gone over days when you just have to be sat there chained to a laptop and nothing else. Studio equipment like this is coming down in price. It's getting a little bit more available. The unfortunate thing is that all these things are slowly dying. Not because they're poorly made, but because the electronics just weren't expected to last that long. The good news is, some of these folds, a lot of these folds are easily rectified. So I've bought this one for £50 of eBay and together we're going to slam into it, see what's wrong with it, have a look inside and see how we can fix it. Okay, so I've got it on the bench. Let's have a look inside and see what is going off in here. Obviously, I've already opened this because I've dried it out in front of the fire to get any moisture I've acquired during transport. Two screws on the side, as you can see there, and a single screw on the back. We'll get that cover off for you. Let's have a look at the bits inside. So down here in the left-hand corner, you've got the power switch. Might be one to look at if you have any faults. There's the disk drive. Power in at the back for an IC connector. Connecting the power to this mains distribution block with a fuse in that distributes the power to this 5-volt power supply that's just here. And the 12-volt transformer that's just here. Over here, you've got the backlight inverter for the display. This whole board here is the computer bit, the bit that does all the processing and does all the business. Some expansion slots here. I'm not quite sure what's in mine because I'm not big into this kind of equipment, but whatever I've got, I've got four of them. So I'll take those out and I'll look at it. And then on this side, behind all this screening, is the audio section. So all the actual audio bits is done on this side. And the good news about mine is, on looking inside is, it's full of dust, which is brilliant because the good thing about dust is, it means there's been no moisture in here. I think the next thing we're going to do is plug this in and see what happens. Okay, so I've checked it all inside for the signs of obvious damage. It is electrical. And uh, I'm going to turn it on, see what happens. So I've plugged the lead into the back of it. I've got the lead and the plug over here. So I'm going to check operation, see what it does. I'm going to put some power into it. So be aware that this is dangerous. You can kill yourself in there easily. Even when it's unplugged, this will hold dangerous voltage. So just be careful. I've got a good view of it. So if anything goes wrong, we'll get to see it. So uh, yeah, let's turn it on and see what happens bollocks okay so not the best start it's i plugged it in turned it on it's tripped on the electricity mouse out which isn't necessarily a bad thing at least it gives me somewhere to start so i'm gonna start by unplugging it right then main suspect at the minute is this five volt power supply this main distribution block the fuse is intact and it feeds out to this five volt power supply and this 12 volt power supply so there's not much to go wrong with a transformer. This power supply is the main suspect, so I'm gonna whip it out. There's a screw on the side and two screws on the bottom, so let's have a little go at that. Okay, so I've got the power supply out. I can see from the terminals that it's got 240 volts in, a ground connection, and five volts out. And also what I can see from this power supply is this blown fuse, which is blown quite rapidly. It's absolutely covered with crap. There's a lot of goo leaking on it. This is a very basic power supply. You can see all the goo that's leaked onto it here. So I'm guessing some of these capacitors are gave up and they've leaked at some point. This is an off-the-shelf product, so I'm just going to get rid of this and reorder another off-the-shelf 5-volt transformer. And this one, you could recap it if you're really interested, but as far as I'm concerned, what's available on the shelf now is better, probably quieter and superior to this, so I'll just find a replacement. This is going in the bin. However, we'll retain all these parts that we've took off to use on the new power supply when it gets here. Okay, so I'm at a bit of a loose end there. I know what's wrong with it, but I haven't got a new power supply. So what I'm gonna do is, 
I'm going to use these crocodile clips to connect the bench power supply to the 5 volt power supply location. Then I can turn it on and just prove that that 5 volt power supply is all that's wrong with this machine. So let's do that. That's the 5 volts connected. Okay, so I've got the power supply set at 5 volts. Let's put 5 volts onto that rail along with the mains power and see what happens. I put the 5 volts on, the disk drives fired up and started reading the disk. I can't see anything on the screen though, so I'm assuming that's because I haven't put the mains power on, so the board's not getting its secondary 12 volts, so I'll bang that on now. Even better news is, it's not tripped, although the disk drive has stopped working. Oh, we're on. That's a worker, although this screen is very, very dark. That screen's dark. I don't think the backlight's working. Right then, good news all round. My five volt power supply, as I suspect it would be, is knackered. So I've been online and ordered a new five volt power supply, which I'll put the details to on the screen. Other little thing that's wrong with mine, that I've done a little bit of Google searching is, you can see the display. The display's there, and the contrast operates the contrast of the LCD. The problem is, the backlight is not working. But other than that, my disk drive seems to operate and all my stuff functions, so what do I need to do to get it working? New power supply, and now I'm gonna investigate this backlight and see what I can do about that. I weren't expecting that, but a Google result has proved it's a pretty common problem. So we'll dive into that as well while we're here. So let's have a quick look inside, see how that works, power all this back down, and get the backlight out and whatever controls that. Right then, so make sure you've unplugged it. This ribbon cable for the disk drives in the way, so I'll just get that out of the way. That lets me get to this backlight inverter, so I can remove the backlight cable there. I remove the 5 volt power supply, which has got a little clip on it, so I need to use the needle nose. That goes to the board just here, it fell out there. I put it back immediately just so I know where it came from, because I didn't mark it as yet. I struggled like bugger to get that back in. So then, I disconnected this backlight inverter, take the two screws out, I can get to it now, took that cable for the disk drive out of the way. There it is. I'm going to plunk them two screws back because I don't imagine I'm going to get this done very quickly and I don't like to lose all the screws because you never know where they've come from. So I'll plop them back in and I need to take the back like that now. So moving to the front, three screws on the top, which I remove. You need to remove the two knobs like that to get the front off and remove those specific three screws on the bottom, not all of them. That will then allow the front to be pulled down. This cable gets pulled and I couldn't get it disconnected there. So I went in the back and disconnected it on the board, which is much easier. Then I found there was a tie up on in place, so I'll just get rid of that. And that allows me to just lie that board down, although the two audio outputs are still connected, without it being hanging on that ribbon cable. Undoing the four screws on the LCD. Won't come off. But if you unscrew these two end ones here, you pull it out and it just pulls out on some slots. I disconnect that cable there on the LCD to prevent damage and I've got the LCD out. Put all the screws back where I found them because it's dead easy to get those screws mixed up with other screws when you've got all bits and bobs off like this and you know it's going to be a while before you get it back together. There we go. It's out. Right then. I'm cutting a long story short here because I appreciate that people are watching this video because they want to repair these samplers. So, what have I got here? First of all, at the bottom down here, I've got the backlight equipment. So this power cable here takes five volts off the PCB board and puts it into this backlight inverter. This backlight inverter then puts a higher voltage, I think it's about 90 volts, to this fluorescent backlight membrane. Unfortunately, the backlight membrane, yeah, this is old technology, although you can still buy these, but I don't want to be reliant on this old technology. And the big problem here is this backlight inverter here is just not available anymore. You can't buy anything that will do it. You can buy old ones off eBay and eBay is full of this exact inverter. But unfortunately, those inverters are dying. So I don't want to commit to replacing a backlight a membrane for God knows how much money, 20, 30 quid, when I know this is faulty. I've tested this and I've decided this is faulty. So the best bet with these is just to make your own. So that's what this equipment here is for, which I'll go into shortly. And just here, I've got all the things I need for the power supply. So here's the old power supply and here's the new power supply. So what I'm going to do is I've identified my problems, the power supply and the backlight. And these seem to be the common problems. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this video up 
and I'm going to cover the power supply and the backlight in two separate videos. The power supply, some people have that problem. The backlight, some people have that problem. So if I cover them in short or snappier videos, I think that's best all around. So watch out, stand by. I'll be doing one on how to replace the backlight and I've got a backlight I've made here. So there's a LED backlight there made from a iPhone 6 backlight, which you have to cut down, which is a little bit tricky and it took me two screens to get it right. So I'll save you the problem doing that by showing you on a separate video and the power supply video because this power supply is great, but what it hasn't got, like the old power supply ain't got, is a fuse. So I don't want to instruct people to get it wrong. So I'm going to do that in a separate video where I cover all the ins and outs and that rather than this video dragging on. So yeah, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And in the next week or so, I'll have the videos up for the power supply and the uh, new backlight.